In this video, I'll be demonstrating basic 3D visualizations in QGIS. So, and by basic, I mean we'll just take an image and drape it over a elevation model. Um, however, it, it does produce rather nice images. So, this image is taken from a 3D visualization in QGIS where we've taken the Autophoto web service of Denmark and then draped it onto a surface. And then it will give us a possibility to do visualizations like this that we can rotate and do all of those fancy 3D stuff. Whoa. Um, let's look at how this looks in QGIS. So if we, um, yeah, I have my DSM. And in the previous uh, video, I talked about how we can filter out the buildings. So we only have the DSM for the buildings, is what I call my urban surface. And in a other video, I talked about how these urban surfaces can be visualized using hill shading. So these are some of the different effects that we've been um, working with for doing 3D visualizations until now. There's um, two tools for doing um, 3D visualization in QGIS. There's a built-in one. I want the 3D view, this one. Um, I won't start it because of some compatibility problems with the other one I'll be using. If I start that one first, I can't start the other one that I prefer. The one I prefer is a plugin. So if you go to plugins and then you look for start typing QGIS to FreeJS. So this is the name of the plugin. This FreeJS is a JavaScript library for doing manipulation of graphic library um, data. So um, this is um, the plugin and you press install. I won't do that because I have already installed it. And um, once you have installed it, you'll see an icon and it will be available up on the, the web menu. So the reason why I prefer to use um, this one is that it um, allows me to export my 3D visualizations to other formats. So either as a web page that I can paste, put on a web server, or even have on my own computer, or I can also export it to a graphic format called um, GL, TF um, graphic library uh, transition format, I think, something like that. Um, anyway, um, transition format, I think it is. So um, it um, doesn't matter, but the idea of what of the format is that I can, um, on Windows, there's a built in viewer for it. Um, there's also web viewers. Uh, many of the Adobe products can use it. And also, as we city engine can read data that are produced in this format. So um, there's lots of um, nice things about being able to write things to um, to this format. So um, when you open the tool, you'll um, see that it has a DEM, and there's nothing DEM over here. So that's what is going to be the elevation model for your or your 3D view. So you can have a flat plan, choose flat plan. It will generate, you'll see what I see down here. I see in this uh, 3D flat thing, not that interesting. Also note that the views are connected. So if I zoom out here, I also zoom out in, um, in my 3D view here. So um, I could do this. So um, move around. It relates automatically into your 3D view. Typically, you don't want this flat one, but let's say you want to have your DSM. Let's go up full screen. Um, you can see it is a bit um, imprecise, wibbly wobbly. 
Um, this, this church doesn't really look much like a church. Um, that's because it downsamples a data set. Um, and that's fine if you're working with rolling hills and so on. But urban with these very big structures, buildings, you'll probably want to decrease the downsampling as much as possible. So like that. And um, now we have a much better representation of the 3D view. Um, still here with the vegetation as our background. You can also choose to have this urban surface instead. That'd be cleaner for many purposes. And again, there I'll have to set its resampling. So now that we have removed all those vegetation elements. So depending on what you, um, you can wonder what that is. Um, depending on what you want, you can have uh, your DSM or your DTM, or sorry, your, your urban surface as your basic. By default, the software will show what you have over in this view. So if I put the auto photo on top here, I'll get the auto photo on top in um in this view so you will see the zooming so if i um now here again here you can see by my dcm is relatively precise um my auto photo is a bit blurry you can change that if you um again here under these properties you set this zoom resolution so basically it starts with the, the resolution of your map view and then if you say 400 percent, you can zoom in four times on that um, that will take some time it'll have to reload the also photo so this okay uh and uh that was really quick today um Okay, it's apparently a little, very, relatively small error. So now we have, we can, in our 3D view, zoom relatively close in on our elevation and get the data from what we're looking at. Typically, if you want something to look really nice, you'll have to um, zoom in in your normal view so uh, it's resampling at the moment from here so it's reloading it to this higher quality maybe I just pull it up so that's done it so uh, now we have this smaller area with this much higher resolution so there is a um, some trade-off between um, size of your view and your resolution. So depending on what you want to do, um, you could do some considerations there. There is a trick. Um, you can, in here, set it to use neighboring tiles. So, um, so we're up here, uh, surrounding blocks, and if you do that, it will give you a larger area. That's super fine for web export. If you do this uh, and then export it to a, uh, this uh, GL, GF format, then it will crash. So leave that one. If you, to start, we'll leave that off. Just find a appropriate uh, zoom level to work on. Uh, so you have something that is covers an area that's large enough and where you can zoom in to the degree of detail you want. And if it's starting down here, because this is because I have this um, 400% uh, uploading thing. So it'll, it'll just take some time to generate the surfaces. So that's because I've multiplied it by this um, 4,000, 400% zoom. So uh, it is a that does take some extra time to start up with. Uh, 
uh, and uh, I'll just uh, and it got moved away here for a moment. So where did I where did I want to go? Um, so this is about that one. Um, so. In the viewer, you can um, navigate. So basically, I'm um, using my left mouse button to rotate, or like this, or, or orbit. I think they call them, and it's in 3D. Rotate. Um, the scroll, the, the scroll mouse button is zoom in, and my right mouse button is my panning tool. I can. And around and look at this strange um, rooftop garden they have here. Um, and it's just pan around. Uh, that is some things you should be aware of. That is, of course, because it what it's doing it is that it is draping a uh, auto photo onto a. Uh, A train model. You sometimes get some really strange effects, such as um, you can see it here. That some of the uh, wall become draped onto the roof, and the roof drapes down to the road. But of course, that's you know the consequence of do it, draping a auto photo that you get. It's seen from above more or less at an angle. So you'll have some problems on that. Um, but apart from that, it is a it does look nice. And what you can do if you're satisfied is that you can go up and then you can do two exports. You can save it as this GLTF format. Let's save it on my D data or uh So save that GFTF file, that, and wait for it to uh, finish down here. And when it's successful, we are finished. And uh, the other thing, oh, maybe you can export things. Huh. Um, just in front of my eyes, of course. So export to web, that was the one I was looking for. And um, here I can save to a folder. So I'll just uh, again save my D drive data and boot and I'll call it uh, web. Oh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. A new folder. Web. So, um, you want to consider this one that is called Enable to run local. Um, if you are going to put it on a web server, you don't have to don't turn this one on. It's something to do with restrictions in web browsers. But you'll just turn this one on, like that. Uh, and I don't want to open it right now. And maybe, well, I'll do this. I'll just add these, uh, let's do that. Just add these neighboring here, because we can do that in the web. So we can have a large export. So now it's uh, finished uh, loading. You can see I now have a much larger area uh, that I can export. So I have maybe even a bit too large because I also outside my one square kilometer. Uh, move a reasonable resolution on it. So um, if you really need to export something large, you can add those neighboring factors. And um, then we can export it to the web. Let's browse to our web folder. Uh, data global web. And 
say that we want to enable to run it locally and we don't want to have it run on our uh, when we finished then we'll export it and of course again that will take um, a wee bit time with this really big export but that is the advantage of the web that we can do these big exports so after some minutes i have now exported my data and i can look at some of these export data i've made so on my d drive i had this web gl file and i had my web thing okay so this one is relatively large it's 500 megabytes um but it's also a really large error that i uh, exported so if i open this folder and open the index again it will be take some time to load the first time so once it's um, started loading we have as we can see a much larger have i don't know uh that's one square kilometer so we probably exported uh, about six square kilometers so far too much but never mind um and you can see i can it once it's loaded it's relatively easy to navigate and uh, you can so if you're doing a project about uh say where are we um yeah this uh park urban garden uh semi-private area um it's relatively easy to do a clip of this and then um send it to customers uh examinators sensors wherever you 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 want to share a um a three d model of some level and it um doesn't have to be such a large area as this one but it's um it's really good to if you want to let people explore a specific area um without them having to have their specific GIS tools. So um all of this is um so this is a web thing running and that you can place it on a web server or in this case I was just running my individual file. Um I can also demonstrate this tool. So if you look for for a GLTF viewer, so it's a L. Um that's I don't know what the difference is. Um, and we can then grab our little U5 from before we export it. And it will load in to our viewer. So this is a little, a somewhat smaller area that we can uh, have in our viewer. And again, there we can. Um, Pan and zoom and whatever. Now environment there. It can do lots of strange things. Uh, so you can have a background. If you for some reason think that you will, you know, like to have this uh, kind of sunset or Venice or I don't know. Uh, there's also lighting settings. That you can work with so uh to to get the view the right lighting you want on your model and this is a really small file um so this file is only uh this as you can see i have the properties so you get it in megabytes so uh, 74 megabytes um so that's really easy to send to someone so they can um view a small a smaller area um relatively easy this can also be pasted to facebook or whatever so um yeah, yeah you can change the background maybe this background is a bit better for presentation purposes so um lots of possibilities with this export so basically in QGIS, um, I prefer to use the plugin.
So this uh, QGIS to FreeJS. Um, there was two ways that you could. So it basically, it displays what you see. So if you change, if you want, don't want to also photo, but want to have your ill shade instead, um, it will uh, probably take a really long time now because I have set all of these. Um, okay, that's not too bad. Um, extra tiles and so on. So, uh, so here we have our, if you prefer to use a hill shade rather than a, um, then an auto photo. That was the two export possibilities. So you could export to a GLTF format, which is a small compact one. If you do that, it's important that you do not have extra surrounding blocks on it. So that one has to be turned off, otherwise it will crash. Uh, the other possibility was that you used uh, the export to web. And that will save a um, a web element that you can be much larger. Um, and there you can have neighboring blocks. If there's a question about that, the export thing takes longer time. And that's basically what's in um, this uh, element of of doing simple draping. Um, so that's basically taking what you have display in your QGIS auto photo hill shade whatever and then drape it onto a surface use this uh curious to vjs to export it as, as a gltf file or as a web so i hope you found this useful um i hope to see you in other videos where we will try and create more advanced uh 3d visualization in not necessarily beautiful more beautiful but where we can make visualizations of things that are not there yet so our own models hope to see you in our videos bye